glad I had my camera with me. So I asked him, did he think it was a success? I think a relative success. Um, I mean, you're always, I'm always, you know, hoping, wishing it was sort of better. I mean, I don't, I don't lose sleep at night worrying about it, but you always want it to be better, you know. And people say, oh, gee, the album's number five. You think, that's great. You think, well, it'd be nicer if it was number one, you know. But yeah, I think a relative success, yeah. You've been very quiet. I mean, we don't seem to hear much scandal. We don't uh, um, see you failing overseas. I mean, it's all, I mean, how seriously do you take this singing? Um, I, well, I like doing it, uh, but I like to have periods away from it too. I think you go and you do it and you do your tour and you make a record and then you kind of nick off and just you know, hide yourself. Well, if making <clears> it <throat> is doing it overseas, do you think perhaps you're going to have to change your approach a bit? Um, yeah, maybe. I, again, I've sort of lost the vibe on that a little bit too. You know, I sort of, a few years ago I went over there and I, it was important and I made it a bit of a commitment. and. Uh, and I think once you, you know, you front up against some of the things that you have to over there and they can be very frustrating and very empty kind of things. There's a lot of easy friendship, there's a lot of firm handshaking and easy friendship over there. And I think once you've been through that a few times, it doesn't become as much of a commitment as it, as it was. You sound like you're growing old. Well, <laughs> well, I am. Actually, I spoke to some ladies I said I was going to talk to James Rain, and they, one of them fainted. Um, putting modesty aside, because you are what you are physically, has it been a problem that you have been considered a ladies' man? Uh, sometimes, you know. It's, it's, uh, people tend to kind of, yeah, The fact that people will dwell on that rather than some of the other things sometimes. I mean, sometimes it's funny and it's fun and you can, you can enjoy it, but... There have been times when people have dwelt on that rather than what perhaps I might have been doing or writing or singing about or, you know. So, so who buys your records? Is it the ladies or the men? I think um, since Australian Crawl, more, it's more men have been buying it. In Australian Crawl, there are a lot. Are you, you tend to notice more at the, at the gigs. I mean, there were a lot of girls at the gigs. It tends to be a little more kind of 60-40 now. So there are more guys buying them these days. Australian Crawl, how, how does one get a group together? Is it like we read in books that you're all having a cup of tea or something or some, or some 2.2s around and they say, why don't we get put a group together? Is that how it happens? Um, well, with us, with Australian Crawl, it was pretty much like that. We were all friends to start with. And, uh, you know, we, we liked listening to music and we had, you know, we used to play a lot and sit at home and you know, dream about it and think it would be great. And it's always a good way to get girls. This was always a big, a big factory. I'm, you know, most groups that form, I think it's one of the reasons they form. Um, but we really pretty much sat around and said, let's, you know, form a group and see what we can do. Have you always been boss? Uh, no, I don't really like to be boss so much. I don't like, well, I don't like to hassle people. I'm, with my own thing, being, you know, my solo thing, I always like to surround, the bands that I have, surround myself with people that I've known for a long time who well, obviously I respect as, as players, but who, I mean, I would r rather be surrounded by friends who may, than super duper players. Because, you know, there's an automatic support system there. And I'd, I'd much rather when we're out on the road be just the singer in the band. You sound like you're having fun. Well, that's the most important thing. That's not always evident in the people I've spoken to in the business. It seems to me it's almost a hell on earth for a lot of them. Well, yeah, I think it is. And I think this is what we were saying before about the overseas thing. I mean, you are expected to sort of sacrifice almost everything for that that success and you've got to be like Paula Abdul or you've got to have elements of Paula Abdul when you know there's, there's no similarity. So to me it's very important that you're enjoying yourself and you have peace of mind and you have friends and you can laugh about it because I mean you know it's only pop music really. <laughs> These are all the things I say people say oh you're cynic. It's funny isn't it? Interesting thing is when I heard you in Australian Crawl and uh, that marvellous and beautiful people which is one of the best videotapes I'd seen at the time all right. It's a terrific one, was around the table. Right, yeah. And I had great trouble understanding your lyrics. Where did you develop, or is it you, that you do funny things to words, that people have to actually read the lyrics to work out initially what you're singing? I, I don't know, it may be... See, my theory was always that people are conditioned into hearing certain things in pop music. You're conditioned into hearing, you know, just got paid on a Saturday night, or love your baby, be my gal. And I was writing, the garden's full of furniture, the house is full of plants. And people aren't used to... Now, that was my theory. I also know, I think, especially in the early days, I did kind of 
mess around with the phrasing of the words. So I think it was a combination of both, you know, my messing with the phrasing and people's conditioning to what they're hearing. One could almost say you're sending us up just a little bit. Well, no. <laughs> when Australian Crawl demised, there's a great word I'm using, demised, uh, was it sad? Was it nostalgic? Was this um, a chapter you put behind yes, it? Yes, it's, it's, it's sad. Uh, the last, especially the last show, I think you expect the last show is going to be this amazing kind of you know, cathartic sort of thing that's going to happen. It, it was, it was very anticlimactic. But I think after on the plane home, we caught it, kind of all looked at each other and went, "Well, you know, that's it." And it was very much the end of a chapter. Um, and I now, especially, really do miss not so much those days, but I miss being just a part of a band and having that support system and just being with your friends. And you know, you don't have to make all the decisions yourself. Yeah. Yeah. You spread the load, don't you? Yeah. If I you mean, make an error, we can say we did the wrong thing. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. What can be said for that? Yeah. Well, that was your area. That's right. You messed it up. Right. The, uh, the new album, which takes about a week to unravel, the cover. <laughs> I'm not sure how I feel about that, but still, you know, it goes on and on and on. Um, Outback Woman. It says on the not on the CD. I know these things, but on the, right. the the single. Right. One take. Yes, it was. Now, seriously. It seriously was. We're all sitting in the studio. Be honest. All sitting in the studio playing all instruments. Well, there are only two of us. Myself and Tony Joe White, and we, we'd sat around in you know at home and kind of worked the song out and what we. Were